Sony's 24mm f1.4 G Master is the best wide angle lens I've ever used, but I hated shooting with it. My name is Jack, scientist by day, street photographer by night. Creativity drives everything I do, but what if it's just a leaky tap about to run dry? Lucky for me, creativity is more like a muscle. The tougher it gets, the stronger it will become, and what I'm most uncomfortable with is shooting wide in photography. The first time I shot with Sony's 24mm G Master, I thought all the reviewers lied. The best and most versatile prime that should live on your camera? There was so much more in frame than I'm used to and my shots looked terrible. Why would anyone shoot this wide this often and is the lens actually any good? Vygotsky's learning zone model tells us that a skill can fall into panic zone, learning zone or your comfort zone and trying a new skill can all too often make us panic. This purgatory is impermanent. Oh by Tori, every flower blooms in its own time. You just need a long-term strategy for learning. Documenting your ideas, exercising and changing our creative scenery are all evidence-based ways to be creative block, but none of it works if you don't stay consistent. We control the artistic process, not the end result. So the worst thing we can do is let the fear of the unknown stop us from picking up the camera in the first place. My biggest fear is being misunderstood. My family moved from Taiwan to Australia when I was 8 in 1992 and our household was a melting pot of competing languages. I learned English by listening to cassette tapes. I would sound out the easiest words over and over again just to dampen the panic of being ridiculed at school the next day. I was putting in the work but my time had not yet come. It's not personal with this lens, I think it's still the best 24mm on the market. F1.4 aperture, 11 rounded aperture blades for circular bokeh even when stopped down. Minimal vignetting or distortion. Well controlled chromatic aberration. The full G Master treatment was silent. Autofocus, manual rings and switches, weather sealed gaskets. All in a compact and well balanced form factor even on Sony's lightest A7C cameras. But there's a huge difference between 35mm, what I'm used to, and 24mm. I came close to selling it many times, until my creative block hit. After the excitement of a holiday, coming home feels like an anti-climax. The same sights and sounds, an endless cascade of the mundane with no inspiration to create. What if that inspiration never comes back? Is there a secret race to create our best work before everything fades away? Oh by Tori, every flower blooms in its own time. Creative block isn't a curse. It's a sign that now's not the right time for your vision to come to fruition. Learning to shoot on wide angle lenses was how I challenged my comfort zone in the meantime. The wider frame of the 24mm field of view means A, it's hard to remove distracting elements and B, there's less background blur even at f1.4. You can fix both these issues if you get close, but not too close. Faces start distorting lines begin to warp. This gave my images a sense of unreality that I wasn't comfortable with at first. Exaggerated angles, objects in the corners of the frame to accentuate their sense of isolation. The 24mm G Master was so sharp that I could add a ProMist filter and still get detailed results with a bit of cinematic balloon. This surrealism was exactly what I needed to break out of a creative slump, but the lens was still too specialized for everyday use. It stayed home an expensive ornament on the shelf. Back in the 90s, there was no Duolingo, but I had the next best thing, a Sony Walkman. Not only could I now listen to cassette tapes with headphones on, it also had a built-in voice recorder. I could talk to myself out loud, listening back to different words or phrases to see if I missed any syllables. I relied on this habit all through high school and then college for any written or spoken assignments just to get the rhythm of the language right. It's no fun listening to your own voice, but it's how I learnt to learn back then. Oh by Tori, my time had not yet come. Fast forward to 2010, I was about to teach my first class as a college professor and it was a baptism by fire. A thousand students in a huge lecture theatre. It was a science class that was filled with 
technical jargon. Walking up to the lectern, I was strangely calm. I'd spent the past month researching every concept on every slide, recording myself repeating every word until I got the pronunciation right. Like I was learning a new language all over again. Talking into a mic felt just like the voice recorder on my Sony Walkman. I knew I'd done the work, so there was no need to panic. The students even gave me a round of applause, unheard of for a first time teacher. I was in my element, finally in my comfort zone. Oh, by Tori. When I launched this YouTube channel, I needed a do-it-all lens that would live on my A-cam. This 24mm was on the shelf right where I left it. I knew how sharp it was, even on a 61 megapixel sensor. It was familiar with all its quirks at that point. Locked off on a tripod, I could avoid parts of the frame and minimize distortion. Top downs, thumbnails, product shots, B-roll. I could do all of this while sitting just an arm's length away from the camera. But look, this 24mm Prime wouldn't be my pick for the first lens you buy, but it may be the last lens you need. It saves me so much time for both photo and video, and I only learn to embrace its versatility by not giving in to that early panic. Oh, by Tori. Every flower blooms in a different season. It was my most used lens for video until a pocket-sized powerhouse took its place. It changed my video workflow and the whole camera industry forever. You'll find that video here when it's ready to go. I'm Jack, capturing the peace in each moment.